In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to use numeric helpers inside of Home Assistant that will make it easier to manage your smart home. So stick around because this is going to help you automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. In previous videos, we've talked a lot about input booleans and to a lesser extent, date time helpers. But I don't think yet we've really talked about the input number helpers inside of Home Assistant. And these things are insanely useful. So in this video, I'm gonna give you three examples of how you can use these input numbers inside of your Home Assistant setup to make your life easier and make it easier to manage your smart home, especially if you like using dashboards. The three use cases we're gonna cover are volume control, threshold duration, and even a custom light transition automation. So let's start with volume control. I use text-to-speech in my smart home a lot. And you know what's a big pain? Having to set the volume in each one of the automations where I use text-to-speech. Because depending on the situation, I want that volume to be different. For example, most notifications, I don't want it to be very loud. It just needs to be loud enough that we would hear it if we're in the room. But for alerts and some of the other notifications, I need that volume to be loud so we can hear it no matter where we are in the house. And to solve this, I use an input number helper. I actually created four for my text-to-speech system. I have one for low volume, normal volume, high volume, and then the main volume, which is used by my main speakers attached to my Home Assistant Blue. To add a helper, you'll find it under Integrations and Devices. Then you can choose Helper at the top. From here, you click Add Helper. After you click Add, you'll want to choose Number. Give it a name, maybe an icon, and to prevent you from having to do any math, set the minimum volume at zero and the max volume at one. Because Home Assistant wants volume as a decimal, one being equal to 100%, percent point five being equal to 50%. For display mode, I leave it a slider. And for step, I use 0 0.05, or you could use 0 0.1, but I use 0 0.05, just for a little extra granularity. Then save. Now you can drop that helper on a dashboard and you'll have a nice easy way to adjust it. Of course, to make this useful, you need to use it in an automation. And this is one way you could do that. Here I have an automation that sets the volume on all of my speakers. It's triggered by either turning on my audible notification switch, which happens automatically each day, or by adjusting the volume sliders themselves. Then this automation calls the media player set volume service and then sets the volume on these speakers to the current value of my number helper. You can do that by using this bit of Jinja here, which is a little more complicated than hard coding it, but doing it this way gives you the ability to easily adjust the volume on every one of your speakers, whether they be Echoes, Googles, or whatever, just by sliding a single slider in Home Assistant. Plus, if you wanna have different volumes for your different situations, you just create an input number helper for each one of those situations. And then when you figure out what volume you want for that situation, you just store it in the input number helper. Then in each of your automations that you wanna leverage a media player, you just call the media player set value service, provided the entity name of a media player, or in my case, a lot of complicated Jinja to determine what media player it should be using, and then set the volume to the value of whatever input number helper corresponds to that situation. It really does make it easier when you're dealing with things like volume. Now, this is a use case that not everyone's going to want or need, but I've built this crazy template sensor for determining room presence based on motion sensors, ESP presence sensors, devices like TVs, and so on. It's really just a giant decision tree that I've programmed into Home Assistant and is a template sensor. And it's probably worth its whole video since I'm now using ESP Presence in this setup. But one of the conditions I look for is any motion sensor that was triggered in the last two minutes. If you've ever done anything where you wanna know how long it's been since an event, you've done some crazy stuff like this. But what I want you to focus on here is the 120, which in this means 120 seconds. So in this bunch of Jinja, what is happening is we are taking the time now, subtracting the last change time from a motion sensor, turning that difference into seconds, and then checking to see if that value is less or equal to 120. But I've hard coded this 120 second threshold. So if I decided to change this, I would have to come back and edit this, but I could just create a helper. 
In this case, give it a name like presence threshold. Minimum value would be 1, max value, let's say 900, which is 15 minutes and seconds, if my math is right. We'll keep it slider and set this step to 1. After we've hit create, we can add this to the dashboard and set the value to 90. Then back in our template sensor, we can replace this 120 with states, parentheses, input underscore number, dot presence underscore threshold, close parentheses, space pipe, space float. And now, anytime we want to adjust the threshold, we can just change the value of our number helper. Again, this is a pretty specific use case, but I hope you can see the value in using these input number helpers in things like template sensors and automations and even scripts in places where you would normally hard code a number value. Now, let's talk about how to use these input numbers to add functionality to an LED light. Now, the easiest way to do what I'm about to show you is to just simply buy an LED light that supports the transition option, you know, where they gradually change in brightness over a period of time. And there are probably better ways of doing it than what I've done, because I do overcomplicate things. But this also gives you the ability to do a custom light transition, because while an input number can work as an input to automations and template sensors, it can also be used to store the current state of a numeric value, like a variable that then you can act on later. Which is why for my master bedroom lights, I created a helper to manage the transition. For this helper, I defined it in the YAML, but you could set this up in the UI. The important thing to remember here is Home Assistant usually sees brightness as a scale between zero and 255. Since we're using this for a transition, I first decided I wanted to have my lights turn on and then brighten slowly over 30 minutes. So I divided the 255 by 30 which got me 8.5. So for the minimum value for this helper, I set it to 8.5. And for my step, I set it to 8.5 as well. And of course, max is going to be 255. Then I created a script that would set the brightness of my lights in the master bedroom to whatever value I pass the script. If you haven't seen my video on using parameters, this makes it easy to build scripts that are general purpose and almost operate like programming functions. For brightness, here we use some Jinja and say that we want to use the value of whatever is in level and convert it to an integer. Then I needed a script to handle the actual transition. This one uses the repeat action, which is simply going to keep repeating this sequence below until this value template is true, or repeat until the value of that input number helper equals 255, which again should equal 100% brightness. Then in the sequence, we call that previous script that sets the brightness to whatever level we pass it. Since we're going to be passing data to that script, we use this data attribute. And under that, assign a value to level. If you're familiar with key value pairs in programming, level is a key and anything after this colon is a value. And for the first time it runs, it'll be 8.5. So all the lights will turn on to brightness 8.5, which is a little more than 3%. Then we call this input number increment service, which is extremely helpful. And we give it the entity of our helper, which will increment the value of that helper one step. Or in essence, at 8.5, since that is what we defined our step as, to the current value. So now instead of 8.5, it's 17. Then we delay for one minute, and when that's over, this whole section repeats and makes sure that we're not at 255 yet, then sets the brightness to 17 or whatever the current value is, and continues on like that until it hits 255 or 100% brightness. Then when that loop is done, I call the set value service and reset the value of my input number to 8.5 so it can be used tomorrow. And then I just need an automation each morning that calls that script and kicks off my light transition. And while we're not going to interact with this input helper directly, it does allow us to create a custom light transition. And of course you could use that to create whatever kind of custom transition you wanted. You would just have to update your step value, your starting value, and maybe the delay. Anyway, hopefully this didn't confuse you more and you're able to see how you could use the input number helper to make things easier for you inside of Home Assistant. But if you are seeing that parameter pattern used in a script for the first time and it intrigues you, check out my previous video where I talk about how to build one script to rule them all. 
where I go into more detail about how to use that parameter inside of your scripts. In any case, now it's time for us to go automate the boring stuff. <laughs>